Hello, welcome Dr. Shushma Singh this side. Today we are going to start Unit 17, Canada. Canada, the world's second largest country, contains an extremely wide variety of geographical features ranging from the magnificent Rocky Mountains, the warm blue Pacific Ocean on the west coast, to beautiful lakes and the magnificent Niagara Falls in central Canada. Moreover, Canada is the largest country in the Western Hemisphere with a total area of 9,97,610 square kilometer and the world's longest coastline extending over 2,44,000 kilometer as well. Canada's economy is not only one of the soundest in the world but has been ranked in which ranking the number one country in the world for several years by United Nations. United Nations has ranked Canada as the best country in the world to live in. The survey compared a total 174 countries using 200 performance indicators including access to education, quality health care, a low incidence of crime in the city and a clean environment. Canada ranks fourth in the world as per Human Development Index 2004. After Norway, Sweden and Australia, Canada the 8th largest trading nation in the world with its relatively low level of inflation is not only an active foreign investors on the global front but also receives a high degree of foreign investment from all over the world. Canada with its population of 31.4 million in 2002 was formed from a confederation of 10 provinces and two territories in 1867. At present, Canada has 10 provinces and three territories, each with its own capital city. The present unit exposes us to a brief background of Canada and major economic activities of different regions of Canada. It looks into the economic history of Canada which shows a clear shift in the economic approaches of Canada and her commitment for regional unity in trade affairs. Even while Canada showed trade openness. There has been attempts in the country from certain quarters for an economic nationalism. These points are also discussed in the unit along with the discussion on economic development of the country. The unit also explains on the social indicators of development of the country. Now let us start the topic economic history of Canada. Though Canada is a single economic unit, to begin with in the following section we will view the economic background of Canada by reason. First we see the central Canada. Initially most of the native people were hunters and food gatherers and agriculture was practiced by a very small number of Incolian group. There was no specialized merchant class but trading was common. Due to the arrival of French and British traders in the 16th century, a great deal of economic and cultural changes occurred among the native people. Much of the central Canada's industry, including the country's two great industries, 
milling and lumbering were dispersed through the countryside or in small villages even in 1871 and afterwards due to the rapid industrialization and urbanization by 1911 half of ontario population lived in cities and towns the second reason is atlantic canada in addition to fur trading sea fisheries brought about major economic development in the atlantic region but the 1920s and 1930s were unhappy decades when the iron steel coal and machinery industries were in chronic difficulty and like fisheries suffered in the great depression no did new manufacturers make much headway in spite of continuing federal subsidies for rail transport the few rays of hope including new pulp and paper plants and new protective market for apples and lumber in britain world war 2 brought hectic prosperity to these communities which served the naval and air bases and after 1945 the situation improved the third reason is western canada fur trade was beginning of economic development in western canada in the late 1890s the prospects for development brightened as world prices rose transport costs fell methods of dry land farming improved and more appropriate variety of wheat became available until 1929 the perrier provinces enjoyed an immense expansion of the wheat economy on to which was grafted before 1940 a much larger rail system a network of cities and towns coal mining and ranching by 1914 the frontier of settlement had been pushed well towards the northwest attracting migrants from many foreign lands the result was a regional economy which depended almost entirely upon the world price of a single crop and on local yields both of which fluctuated greatly with new projects in oil gas pipelines building and potash the years after 1945 saw resource based development rapid urbanization and dramatic increases in the standard of living new markets for wheat in the elsewhere ussr china and in developing nations opened up new horizons the western provinces remained heavily dependent on the export of a new primary products and on the investment activity which the primary industries could generate the west remained development minded as it had been between 1896 and 1914 most of the canadian were doing white collar jobs and staying in cities by 1980s there was less disparities in incomes and standards of living but the economies of the various regions were quite different ranging from manufacturing to generation of surpluses of national products during this period despite all these development in the atlantic provinces living standards were comparatively low here we want to close this lecture thanks for listening